Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do a character guide on Ida. Now I know this is kind of odd, but I really want my channel to be a place where like there's a character guide for every character in the game. And I never did do one on Ida because I never had her LD. So since I just got her LD, I did do like an Ida Roth showcase, um, but I want to do a proper character guide on Ida. And um, I'm going to do the Ida Roth again and just show you a couple of, like there's just one tidbit I forgot to mention in the last video that's kind of important um, that I didn't calculate into my last uh, guide on that, right? So we'll get to see Ida Roth again. We're going to see it with a different combo that also works out really, really well. Um, but we're going to talk about like kind of what this character does because, you know, I want you to see Ida outside of just Ida Roth and say, hey, what can this character do? Now I'm going to tell you this right now. Ida is not going to look impressive right now, but she's a very old character that hasn't had a rework in a long time. So what we're going to be thinking about is, well, what could this character look like and how would we want to build them based on that? Because they can make any character really good. They just have to get the right re rework, right? So in this video, we're going to look at her calls, her artifacts, and her spheres. Um, so right here, we have got her, uh, her uh, calls. And just so you know, Ida is pretty much just like a straight up damage dealer. She does have a couple of interesting debuffs um, and she does have like some kind of speed mechanics where she can steal turns, right? Which is kind of how the Ida Roth thing all works. Um, her calls, I'm gonna tell you this, they're not good. <laughs> you don't really need to use these. Uh, snap Punch is literally just an attack and then it does attack and max brave up for the caller. Nothing too crazy. The LD is literally just damage. Now there was time like when her LD first dropped, it was a good call. Um, it was kind of like how people used the Cyan call or how people would use Kuja call. They were just very powerful LD attacks, um, but this has been heavily power crept. Uh, so you really don't need this just for damage. Uh, you can bring in any modern characters call and their LD is gonna be doing more damage than hers anyway. So don't really worry about Ida call for anything. Um, I would say right now, if you're getting Ida, you just picked her up on the side when you summoned on the other banner, but you're probably not gonna use her unless you wanna do the Ida Roth combo, right? So let's go ahead and look at her actual uh, character here. And we're gonna look at her artifacts and her spheres. Um, she's very basic. Now, the one thing I wanna say with Ida as we go through artifact and sphere recommendations, I do think these recommendations could change in the future depending on how they build or rework, right? Right now, I think when we're looking at artifacts, we're just looking at attack 108, max break 330, pretty basic, right? Um, when we look at the spheres, kind of we would look in the same thing. We would look at attack, max brave, we'd look for brave damage, things like that, because she is meant to be like a melee damage dealer. So those are the types of things you're gonna look at. So right now my builds are gonna be around attack, max brave, and brave damage. But in the future, I think I brave could have some value. Now the reason why is, Ida has a poison that scales on I Brave. So if they do a rework and they make the poison like one of the focuses of her kit, and they maybe plug in I Brave stuff somewhere else, I think I Brave could be in the mix. Now, right now, the way she's built now, I think you pretty much just want to focus on attack stuff because you're pretty much using her for Ida Roth and anything that can speed it up in terms of damage, brave hits, max brave, all that is going to help, right? So right now, what I'm kind of going with is something like a Gilgamesh or a Sephiroth, uh, something that would be max brave and attack. I think a Shelk would work, right? Any of those would be pretty decent. Um, and then I also have attack and brave damage. So like Jack and I think Shelk is the other one that's attack and brave damage I was thinking of. So stuff like that. Um, just look for A slots that she can fulfill. Uh, I think that would be one of those, right? Now on the E slot, I feel like Yuffie's kind of the better one here. It's Max Brave and Attack, which really those are the stats we're looking at right now. But in the future, you know, like I said, it could be I Brave, could be something else. Um, you know, because her kit revolves around breaking and getting free turns, if they rework her and give her instant break where she can just self unbreak enemies, then we're talking like... Um, Vanille, right? Like Vanille E slot could be really, really good on Ida if they give her something like that. So just keep in mind that this build definitely could change in the future, but we don't know like what, like JP hasn't gotten her yet. She's one of the oldest characters to not get a force, to not get a rework. Um, so she's definitely due any time. She was actually the character people were speculating to be the global first for fifth anniversary, but ended up being Pinello, right? So I uh, just know that at some point she's going to rework and she's going to be looking pretty good. But right now, uh, not the craziest, but that's how I would build her right now. Um, so what I am doing here is I'm going to try to make her look as good as I can. Uh, we do have the Ultima weapon on her. We have the Lufenia armor just base. I haven't powered that up at all. Force enhanced 10. No real reason to go force 30, especially on a character who doesn't have a force. So we're just going to run her like this. Um, and then here's the team build. 
So we're going to do Sephiroth and we're going to do Dorgan. Um, Dorgan is known as one of the best characters on this combo because he's not just the follow-up character, but he follows up anytime the enemies are broken. Um, and so his follow-ups are a little bit more powerful, I'd say, than other follow-up characters because it only happens on break, not on any attack. And the other thing with Dorgan is because Sephiroth is constantly resetting, Dorgan will also um, do a follow-up if his follow-up breaks. So what will happen is, is Ida will break, Dorgan will follow up, they reset in between, Dorgan breaks, and then Dorgan gets a second follow-up. So you end up getting three attacks every time Ida attacks. So for doing Idaroth, it's probably the fastest, even faster than Quina, because even though you're getting more damage with Quina, I think because you're getting so many more attacks, I think it's going to outweigh that. But it might depend on the fight and how defensive the enemies are, right? So let's go ahead and hop in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at Ida traditionally. We're going to look at all the skills, explain what they do. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll set up an Ida Roth. And I'll go over that one piece that I kind of forgot to mention on the Queena version that I had done. So that you guys know how to properly set it up, right? All right. So the first thing we'll talk about is Ida does start with an overhead called Grease Lightning. I believe she gets this when you max out her LD. Um, and it gives her attack 30%, uh, Brave granted up. Uh, brave regen uh, and that also scales on eye brave so that is another eye brave stat um, brave damage 20 percent overflow stolen up and then eye brave plus 80 and then basically her buffs and debuffs get an extra three turns added on to them um, and then the stacks don't decrease with the ld um, and then it does upgrade the ex as long as grease lightning has one stack and it starts at one stack so as long as you have the ld it won't decrease and you just basically have it right um, let's go ahead and Dorgan will just do an attack here. I don't really care what Dorgan does. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It's been so long since I've used Dorgan other than like the break counters. I barely remember what the rest of his kit does. I know it's got wind damage. There's, I, I tell you guys, there's so many characters in the game. There's times where it's like, I got to go back and watch my own guides because it's been so long since I've used these characters. I got to remember what they all do. Right. All right. So with Ida here, oh yeah. And I do have the attacks out of order, um, but we'll do the AA, which is just a basic attack up. Um, gives some stats, sure, definitely want to do that. It's actually an attack, uh, max brave and brave damage limit up. So sure, that's fine. You can see it's only four turns. It'll get upgraded whenever she gets her rework, right? So yeah, let's just start by looking at her kit and uh, we'll go from there. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll showcase, you know, so she has a brave plus plus and she has an HP triple plus. So she gets these with the LD buff, which she has at the start. So you can start getting free turns, but she only gets them off the brave attack or the HP attack. Now, what happens if you do the Brave Plus, she gets an instant turn and a free turn. And that's key to doing Eateroth, which I forgot to mention before. We'll talk about it when we do it. Then the HP Triple Plus is also like a free turn, right? Um, but it's not, uh, yeah, so we'll just go through and do that. So let's do HP Triple Plus. Okay. And then you'll see here, we're going to follow up with Dorgan. <clears throat> now, Sephiroth isn't re-breaking, but we got an extra turn from break. And this works like any character that gets the, the, the extra turn from break. So we're on the free turn right now. On the free turn, if I were to break, I would not get an extra turn. The thing that's unique with Ida, though, is he she gives herself another turn back to back, right? We talked about this when I did the other Ida off. So right now, I could do any attack. And then if there's a breakable enemy, I could just get an extra turn again. And that's pretty much how Ida Roth works. But we won't do that yet. We'll just kind of go through and do some attacks. So let's do snap, uh, snap punch here. Once again, you're seeing the damage is going to be pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I mean, 500k, yeah, for what she is, sure, that's fine for how old she is. But we have characters now that are doing at least a mil plus on every button press. I think that's kind of the expectation now, especially for a damage dealer. You need to be doing at least a mil on every button press, I'd say, to be a competitive damage dealer. So Ida here um, pretty much will always have the plus version. It's basically if you don't have it, you can use skill 2 and you'll get it. Um, but as long as you have the LD, uh, you should, if you have the LD buff up, you should just have that, right? Um, so it does do a brave gain, does an attack, and it does 100% crit if the enemies are not targeting Ida. And then Ida just gets an attack up, max brave up, and speed up. Super basic, right? And this is for, you know, once again, a character that is desperately in need of a rework, right? Let's go ahead and do Touch of Death. Now, this is where I think Ida could get interesting with a rework. You see the damage is outright terrible. 280k with 150k splash. Ridiculously bad damage for today's content, right? Now, it does have high turn rate, so sometimes she will jump turns on it. Um, and then it just does Brave Gains in between the attacks. Um, it will upgrade Snap uh, the Snap Punch to the plus version if it already isn't on that. And then what I think makes it interesting is it does put a sap and HP poison down um, on the enemies, right? So 
what the sap is going to do it's going to do a 20 percent max brave down on the enemies and then it's going to do an hp poison which is scaled on 100 percent of ida's attack so this is why attack is a very important uh, stat on ida not just to do more brave damage but it's going to help the poisons do more damage um, and then there's also a separate poison debuff which is also going to be 70 percent of eye brave so Ida's putting on double, like there's a sap and then two poisons. So there's a lot going on. Uh, and we'll try to look at the enemies as they take a turn to see all that stuff happen. So I think what they'll do whenever they rework Ida, I think they're going to really tie into the sap and poison stuff and make her like a really, really insane, like debuff specialist. That's what I think they should do with her. And then getting the bonus extra turns and stuff on attacks, I think will just be a nice bonus, uh, but we'll have to wait and see, right? Uh, Sephiroth, we're not going to set up BT effect yet. We don't want to go crazy. Then I get through the rest of Ida's kit here. Okay, so Ida now, uh, we did those two. We don't have the EX yet, but we'll get there. But let's do the LD, six-sided star. Now this used to be insane damage back in the day. Let's see how much damage you got here. Okay, yeah, I mean, dude, putting up a mill AOE for how old she is, that's actually really impressive. So that just tells you how busted her LD was because she was so old. Because if I'm looking here, uh, let me just look back here. Her last character guide was august of 2022 like we're we're going into summer 2023 right now darn near a year <laughs> since you know if you think we're only a few months away from august like so what it's been nine months or something ridiculous like that since she's had a rework so for a nine month old character doing one mil on the ld like i'll take that like and so that shows you that was one of her values for her call was that ld was pumping up some big damage because <laughs> to say it's doing damage that's okay for now Think of it like nine months ago. Like, that's pretty dang good. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Dorgan, we'll just do an attack here. That's fine. We'll do your LD. Dorgan, we'll get follow-ups from this. Okay. And then what we'll do with Ida is we'll pop the EX, and then we'll set up an Eateroth, and we'll call it a video from there, right? So, Sephiroth, sure, let's go ahead and Octa Slash here. We'll let this A enemy take a turn, and we'll see the poisons come into play here, I think. All right, let's see the A enemy go. So, yep, poison, HP damage, yep. So, we got, you know, a couple of poisons going on there. Um, and then let's do Tornado Kick Plus, and we will break with it here. Let's do that. All right, 600K. Yeah, not the craziest. And then Dorgan, you know, jumping in with his 100Ks. Um, so, Tornado Kick is just an AoE attack with Splash and Brave Gains. Um, and that's it. Like, it has nothing else with it. So when she reworks, I think they're definitely going to add, like, some buffs or something with that. It does enable the Brave Attack++, plus plus, but that that's it. So really, yeah, not, nothing really great there, uh, you know, from Ida, right? Um, so, sure, let's go ahead and throw some calls on just to be safe here. And then Sephiroth, we're going to pop BT, and then we're, we're going to roll right into Idaroth. Dorgan set up and ready to go. Um, so then we can kind of set that up, right? So, uh, sure, Dorgan, you can just go and do the Spellblade break. It's fine. Okay. Um, and then Sephiroth, let's BT. And actually, what we're going to do here is let's wipe some turns. That way we can just kind of be uninterrupted here and get Eateroth going. All right. And then Sephiroth, BT effect, which will be right here. Um, so the way this works, in case you didn't watch my last video, Sephiroth's BT is really busted with certain uh, characters. Uh, Dorgan and Ida specifically are two that like really... Uh, really feed off of this guy's BT. It basically makes it so that after any action, the enemy's brave always resets to one, so they will never stay broken and they're breakable every single attack, which Dorgan loves and Ida loves. So uh, this is why this team comp specifically is pretty crazy, but it's going to take you a long time to beat a fight. So it's kind of like you put it on auto and you set it and you walk away because it'll literally take hours to beat a fight because Ida doesn't do that crazy of damage, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do with Ida. So the one thing that I miscalculated that I wasn't paying attention to when I did the Queen of One is that the turn count was going up. So obviously Edoroth isn't going to work if your turn count is like 200 turns, right? Because you have a turn count requirement to beat a mission. But what I forgot to do was to do the Brave Double Plus. So the Brave Double Plus, what it does, it has a weird interaction. I don't know that it's intended, but it's supposed to give you a free instant turn on break, right? And so what happens is, is so right, right now, Ida's starting the turn, right? So for Ida's first break to set up the extra turn, I'm actually going to do the Brave Plus. So we're going to do that. Okay. 
So I've done that, and now I'm going to be on the free turn. And from here, I believe I should just be able to HP plus, and the turn count will never increase. So we'll just double check to make sure I set that up correctly. And just keep in mind, when you go into your settings here, you want to change it from auto plus to normal auto. And then if I press auto, it's just going to HP triple plus over and over again. The enemies keep getting unbroken here with Sephiroth. And now we're getting Dorgan double follow-ups because Dorgan also broke. And now Dorgan's going to follow up again because he broke. And then we're on turn 11. Let's see that that number stays. It should. Okay, so HP plus, it stays. And that was the free turn. But because Ida backs up with another turn, now she can attack again and earn another free turn. Okay, and we'll just watch it a little bit here. Make sure that our turn count does not increase. Ida's going to go ahead and attack again. And yet we're still on turn 11. So I think we've got the combo set up successfully. So the big thing is, is you have to brave plus. It has to be on the turn when you're not on an extra turn. It has to be when you're on just like a normal turn and her Brave Plus earns you the free turn. And the way it interacts is that because it gave you that free instant turn, it like never loses that and it just stays um, because we're constantly earning free turns. So I don't know if that's intentional by the devs or not. I feel like it's unintentional because they wouldn't want Ida to be able to do this. Now you can't eat a Roth any fight, right? There's a few things you have to keep in mind. This fight, for example, would not work because you can see we have an HP poison on us. And so we're going to be at one HP with Ida at the end of the fight, provided unless like Ida being at one HP is like sufficient to still meet the HP requirement. But you could still do it. Like maybe you put a healing call on Ida. You'd have to kind of watch your phone and then like pause it. And then like at the very end of the fight, like go in manual and make sure you do a heal before the last hit or something. Sure. You still could make that work. Um, and something like that. And then you also have to make sure you deal with any boss mechanics. Now, it used to be back in the day that you had to deal with a Lufenia orb, right? Well, in today's game, you got to deal with uh, a force gauge or uh, threshold attacks, right? So provided like you can throw a Raijin call down first and then the Raijin call blocks everything, you might be okay. Um, I do feel like it could be difficult to use in some fights. So you just got to really test out the fights. This isn't like something you can do in every fight. And I don't recommend you guys do this because... It's not very fun, right? I, the only way I would use this is if there's a fight that you've tried and it just seems like impossible and you can't beat it. If you want to cheese it to get the rewards, like I wouldn't blame anybody for doing that. That's the only time I would use it. But like if you haven't even attempted the fight or like tried team comps and, and things like that, like at least give it a good normal try, I would say before you go in and do this either out. But yeah, you'd have to make sure your phone's plugged in. You have to make sure your phone doesn't go to sleep uh, and you just sit here and it's literally going to take like hours for this to get done. Um, you can see they're at like 80 something percent, but this is like the first ever Shinryu. The modern Shinryus have like way more HP um, and even doing this would take forever. So anyways, guys, there you go. There's Ida's character guide. That's pretty much what she does. Very, very simple character at this point. Um, we'll definitely do a guide on her again once she gets her rework. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.